Hey, what is up guys? This is Jonathan. And uh, today I'm gonna quickly go over how to ready up a model for 3D print in 3ds Max. So without further ado, let's just get to business. So uh, right now this is a project uh, I was working on for a client. He came across a model I made for myself, his personal work practice. And um, he wanted to, to get it printed, so I thought uh, It'd be cool to just make a little tutorial on it and uh, it's a good reference for myself and uh, it'll help a lot of people out there. So uh, yeah, let's get started then. So I'm gonna open up this file and um, so we've got this nice little piece of model here, really cool. And um, the first thing you wanna do when you're starting here, like so say you have your model already made in Max, uh, one of the first things you wanna go through is do a vertex weld it's not going to really like a bunch of unwelded verts. Um, this this piece here is, is all ready to go. I know everything's welded up, but for uh, tutorial's sake, we're going to do a vertex weld. And uh, yeah, we're going to ship it just like this. It'll print well. <laughs> no, it will not. So we got to fix this up. Um, real quick, I'm going to switch my Unix to generic. And. Um, so, all right, so we got our threshold way too high, so let's go and bump that down quite a bit. Um, even now, it's a little too high, but um, a good way to, a good indicator will be in your verts. So you'll see your, your vert number exchange. So what you want is you want your, you want to see a change in your verts without a change in your actual model. So, so what that means is that um, you would have like two verts sharing the exact same 3D space. So you'd have like, for instance, two verts here and you would just have to weld those bad boys together. So, uh, like I said, everything's good on this model, but that's the first thing you wanna check. Um, so the next thing you wanna do is you want you now want to run the, the STL check modifier here. So we're gonna hit this guy, and you can pretty much keep the settings as is, check everything, all the errors, uh, and faces, as opposed to edges, it'll just show you Kind of work what's going on so then all you do is click check here and it's going to think for a minute check out your model sniff it make sure it smells good if you got a lot of pieces not so much topology as opposed to a lot of attached like sub objects it's gonna take a little bit of time so uh, all right so we just got our results and yeah we got errors not cool we gotta fix that stuff so now what we can do is we can just, uh, oh, before I delete that, it'll show you then where the errors are. So uh, it's, see this red right here? It's showing that uh, most likely we have an uncapped uh, sub-object. So it doesn't like things not being capped. Everything has to be capped. Um, you would think this is good to go, like everything, even even though the geometry is uh, running, into, running in together, uh, you would think that's good, but it's not. So everything has to be uh, capped right off. So what I'm going to do here is attach these pieces and then we're going to isolate here. Um, and so yeah, so you see these open caps. Not good. We got to fix that up. So there's a couple ways to do it. Um, one way we could obviously just go into our sub object mode with border and select, oops, sorry, got out of it, and select border and just straight up go to cap. And we'll cap the other side too. Um, but there's an easier way to do that. So say you have, uh, for instance, a lot of pieces that aren't capped. Instead of like manually going through and selecting one by one, um, you know, what you could actually do, you see these caps are open. What you could actually do is just go to a modifier, cap holes, and boom, it's gonna cap everything that has an open, open face. Um, now, if you have like really crappy topology, it's going to be a little bit tougher because it's not going to know, you know, if you have unwelded verts and like, so say you imported an STL from a program like CAD or SOLIDWORKS or Rhino, um, CATIA, it's, it's, it's usually going to be kind of messy on the import. It's hard to get a clean import from that stuff into Max. So you're going to have to do some manual cleanup, most likely, um, welding verts and just giving things kind of a quick retopo just so you can make it uh, clean enough for print um, so all right so we're gonna delete that 
Oh, no, actually, I don't want to delete that. We're going to actually want to collapse that. So uh, we're going to get out of here now, and we're going to go back to this big piece. Now, what you can see here is, like, you can see where these two are good. Let's try to attach this. So this one didn't have any errors because, as you can see, it's straight up capped right off nice. So you have a nice cap here. So you, what you want is solid blocks capped in, in, in conjunction with one another. So, um, so yeah, that's good to go. So let's just go back here and let's attach everything. Cool. And let's give it one more. Sorry, it appears a little, a little laggy. Got to get an upgrade soon. All right, so what we want to do is one more STL check. We'll run through this bad boy. Check it. Everything as it is. We'll hit check. Stretch. Dance. Sing. Whatever you want to do while it waits. <clears throat> I myself like to stretch. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what we get here. Don't want errors. No errors. <clears throat> So there we go, no errors, we're good to go. Uh, you could probably just delete it or you could collapse it, I really don't think it matters, but just delete it. Um, and now what we wanna do, so we welded the edges, we ran through an STL check, it's coming back good, saying, you know, welded, verts are welded, everything's capped. Uh, one final thing we wanna do is we wanna run an X-Form modifier. So we wanna run an X-Form modifier, and what that does is just kinda resets uh, just position and orientation and. Uh, everything right where it's at so it it exports nicely sometimes especially like if you import into Keyshot, it seems like you have to you have to run an X form on your models otherwise pieces are like floating and all over the place and just because position and orientation kind of uh, just get messed up in the process of modeling so um, that's one way to do it and you just collapse it uh, another way to do it too is you can go all the way to utilities here reset X form and reset it like that so there's a couple ways of doing that. And uh, yeah, good to go here. I mean, and one final thing you could do is you could go to uh, X view right here and hit uh, base orientation. Just make sure that nothing's flipped. If it was flipped, you would see it uh, in green. So and that's, that's another good thing to do. Um, let's just collapse that just so you can get a, so you can get a view on it. So now you can see that's green. What that means is that that piece of geometry is inside out. So um, yeah, you'll get issues with that. So what we'll do is we'll reflip it, and um, it might not matter so much for print, but uh, just about everything else. So if you bring it again into Keyshot or or Substance Painter, anything revolving around texturing materials, it's everything's flipped inside out and rendering. I mean, so it's always a good rule of thumb to just check your face's orientation. Um, so there we go. That's about it. Now what we want to do is we just want to um, export the STL. Now the only way to export the STL, you can't do export selected because you won't have the option. Um, I got confused in, with that in the past. So as you can see, there's no stereolithic um, option here. But I don't understand why personally, but um, what we can do is we can just straight up click export. If we just do that, we'll have the option. So or stereo litho and there we go we'll select that save it and uh, yeah you don't even have any option just a couple options I just default it uh, you might give it a name um, and piece and uh, yeah we should be good to go so oh no data to expert so you have sorry <laughs> you gotta have it selected I didn't have it selected I didn't think you need to but yet yeah totally makes sense all right so uh, let's just do that again quick sorry for wasting your time pick a type and we'll save that once again and uh, we'll just whatever object one's cool for now all right and yeah it just boom right away exports there's no wait it's not like exporting an FBX or, no, or an OBJ we have some downtime so uh, what I want to do quick then is to just check it out make sure everything went well so I have a default 3d viewer we can just view models and uh, yeah it looks good orientations there um, yeah we've got our right position sometimes like like I said if you didn't do X form it might come in at like a 90 degree angle and uh, you don't want that you want it to print as you have it in your in your program so 
Um, yeah, that's about it, guys. I hope that helps. Um, it's 3D printing is really cool stuff. I'm just kind of scratching the surface. I look forward to having a printer myself. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. I'll, uh, I'll post future stuff. I'll post <laughs> videos in the future. So, all right, have a good one.